Äh, herzlich willkommen. A warm welcome for a talk. For a talk. Um, Inside, with, and about uh, Amit Goffa's Sleeping for Tomorrow Project version one. I'm very happy that we can join here uh, all together, also with a honored guest from the Art Academy. He also he already visited the exhibition with his class today. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, Robert Fleck, Professor Dr. Robert Fleck, is. Uh, we just talked about Harald Seemann and some experiences he did in the Deichtorhallen in Hamburg uh, with this great Ausstellungsmacher, or the term is now curator. And uh, we are happy that, that Amit Goffer asked us actually to do this project in the first version and also presenting it globally. And it is already uh, in a global state of affairs, we can say. Uh, I think you have already some connection as you just talked about other projects you did, for example, in Cambodia. So I think we can start with your, or my idea is start with your project here. And uh, some weeks ago, before you asked me or, or we discussed it, I also visited um, the Corneli Münster Museum or the collection of the land North Rhine-Westphalia where your bunker actually is installed. And, uh, when we met the first time, I remember it was some years ago in your studio, you showed me this weird place and, and this yeah, one-person bunker, I don't know, maybe that fit uh, four or five people in when they're slimmer. Um, no, I was really uh, keen on, on learning more about your ideas on this uh, project and, and how to combine uh, art, art, artistic ideas with social ideas, with communication tools and, and also the invitation for the audience to be part in your project and so on and so on. So, happy to have you. Thanks for coming. And I think we can start with uh, maybe Robert. Yes, thank you very much for the invitation. But perhaps to start, I would say it's very interesting, the situation here. It's site-specific, but it's also something which is going on inside, outside. And this has a real tradition, I would say, in this house, because you have a lot of works from the early years here, which are also like being inside, outside, also the boys. And, uh, and so uh, I feel that it's really interesting that if you pass by outside, you see the same uh, inscription as if you would be inside, and you can nearly do the same thing. Um, and so how did you conceive this inside, outside? Uh, so, the inside-outside situation is something that I'm dealing with it, uh, for a lot of years. Uh, it's about how we are communicating, are we communicating, is this uh, situation is making a barrier for us, or it's giving us a situation that we connect to other people. And in, in, the, work, in the work here in the, in the foyer, it's, it's a very interesting situation because this work is almost unseen from outside. Uh, you have the big window, and this window is reflecting the street outside. And when you're passing, you almost can't see it. But if you're getting close to it, your reflection is coming on the window itself. And then you have, basically this object is half an object, and it's continuing to the street with the other side. Because when you're in front of the windows, you feel that you are trapped inside of this object too. So it's your reflection, your idea, maybe your spirituality uh, situation is in part of the work, and this is one part that you can connect to it. And uh, the, the object in itself, it's very minimalistic, but uh, if you go into it, it becomes for you a personal space. And it's interesting that you, it's transparent to the outside, but you are kind of disconnected. And you can reconnect through the... Uh, dispositive to the technical uh, or to um, entering into the game in a way, no? So this idea for personal space is very important, no? And of disconnecting, reconnecting. Yeah, so I'm originally I'm coming from Tel Aviv and Tel Aviv is the, the Bauhaus city of the world. And for me, uh, 
space related how I'm feeling and moving in a space do I feel uh, okay with it or I don't feel okay with it or growing in Israel with all of the conflict and the war and something that it's happening all over the world but in the old times we have a kind of a shelter room inside of the cellar so all of the neighbors went went down and now you have it in in normal spaces and in the situation that we have with the corona time and with the war that is coming and going we all kind of shaking in, in, in life and we're trying to find our own a uh, safe own personal physical space a safe place a mental physical space too so we can be with ourselves and with our thoughts and maybe trying to communicate with other people too and the of course the the real situation is making that it, the object is becoming like a metaphor because of course we we think on the masks these anti-corona masks <laughs> so it turns very often Uh, your project turns in another meaning, in a way, through the context. So I think what's interesting in all of the projects that I'm doing, that it's changing by time. And now we are in Corona time, or we are in war time, or when we, maybe it's winter, and maybe it's summer, and the atmosphere that people have inside of this park, it's very different. And it's a, it's a very unique moment that you can can, can go kind of a, a capsule at time and hear and reflect other people's ideas and maybe it's reflecting something uh, something with you. Maybe it's, you can connect to this. You're charging it physically and mentally with something else and you can record the message and react to it too. So you're reacting to other people and some other people in long term, if it's here or in another place, can take your thoughts and generate some new ideas with it. So what you uh, supposed or invited to record is the thoughts or the reaction you have when you're in this, in this personal place where you're disconnected from, from the outside world which you're seeing at the same time. It depends. It yeah. depends on the person because uh, we're going to talk about it in a second, but this work is not just a site specific. It's a part of it's connecting to all over the world. Uh, we made a special program that people can go to a virtual space, a virtual bunker for now, and record themselves with their phones or in the street or in a computer. And this is going to a bank and this bank generating basically the thoughts of people. And it's telling you basically where it was recorded. And uh, it's, it's a very, very strange situation. And even when I'm in the window outside, You have on the window from the outside all of the information from the work from the inside. And you have a QR code. And through this mm -hmm. QR code, you can go to the virtual space, that the, the not a metaphysics space, a new space that everybody is in now, and connecting to other people too. And through this personal space, in fact, you can connect to a virtual community, which is uh, potentially endless. The idea of this project is trying to connect as much as many people from all over the world. Uh, because when I came to Germany and I had one of my big uh, exhibitions with an object, I could see how people from different generations and different uh, countries are reacting differently to the situation. And now with the internet and this work, it's happening again. We have a kind of a different reaction to this, but this reaction is still happening and it's really interesting to see. How, how it's affecting people. If it's something that it's, you suddenly can hear someone that is very emotional and you're trying to, to cry. I, I heard a person that she was standing here and she's, she's reflecting about the situation now with, uh, with Ukraine. She's saying, I'm from, from St. Petersburg. And, and you can hear with her voice, like she's shaking. It's, she, we're trying to communicate. We're trying to connect. We don't, we don't want, want this. And some other people's, saying other situations, someone is missing to Istanbul, or someone is saying, I love you, my son, Friedrich, it's Liebedich. And so it's, it's, it's changing, and suddenly we have something from, a, from Africa or from, so, from so, for Spain, so maybe you don't understand the language, but in the tonation you can understand the feeling of the situation of the moment. It's just through the fact that the object is very kind of very pure minimalistic and this kind of 
ans answers and everything. Um, I just think about uh, works of the 70s from Hans Hake. Do you know this? Is this interesting for you? I am really interesting and I'm really influenced from the minimalist. Mm. I think the pure form for me is really, really important. How can I go inside of a space that it's very basic, basic form, and to have something uplifting, mm -hmm. physical and mentally, that you're thinking about some other place. Maybe I'm trying to connect with a different universe or a different dimension. And then we have a vibration of energy moving in the room and trying to communicate mm -hmm. and connect. Mm -hmm. I had the feeling also like an association like that it's a blind space because if you're in there and you concentrate on this, you don't see anymore anything else. And uh, because it's, it's no longer about seeing. Yeah. It's visual art, but it's no longer about seeing and it's kind of a non-space. That's, yeah? that's true. Because here, for instance, here in this room, everything is functional. Of course, we have a staircase. Everything has a function. And there you're in a kind of a non-space where all this is disconnected. This is a very good hint I, I, I haven't even thought about because um, we had a person here today from the Robert Smithson estate. Because tomorrow is an opening in Bochum in the Museum Unter Tage. And she visited us here today because she said that was so amazing to see the Kunsthalle Düsseldorf because of the, uh, due to the prospect show. And I think the third prospect was uh, on land art. There was a curated, I, I'm not, I don't know if you're familiar with the project series, that was in opposite of the Rheinische Kunsthandel, how was it called, by Hein Stünke and, and Rudolf Zwirner. Konrad Fischer and Hans Strelo invented uh, the International Art Fair here, one year later. And they invited people from all over the world, mostly Europe and, and America, you, you United States. And there was a curated, they had booths and so on and so on, but it was a curated art fair. And one was on land art. And Robert Smith and Michael Heitzer, for example, did one piece here uh, in front. And Robert Smith had a, a tree here, a dead tree, and mirrors. And of course, this is the aspect of side and non side And that's, of course, also Hans Hake and Robert Smith together with Afid Koffer, it really, it's, it's a... So, no, yes, but so it's, interesting it's a metaphor. situation in a completely different world. Where now we, we have internet. We, they never thought about this. But the, the thing about how you deal with space, because it's also so, um, that's just to say for Prospect, this was kind of the most important show in Germany like for years. And at the end, it was Prospect Retrospect, like in 74 or something like that. And, hmm? I don't know. It's at, the book is at Walter Koenig, but of course. I, I think uh, almost all of the work that I'm doing are starting at site specific. So the work is for a specific space. Mm. It's always communicating with the size of the space. And there's always surprises in the process. So when I started this, I, was, I wasn't thinking about this reflection, but then I was Suddenly, we were like a few days outside and we did like photos and then I, I saw my reflection and it kind of, you're seeing all your twins or your, your inner thoughts or, or something else is happening and, and evolving. And it's really, it's a kind of a poetic uh, situation in the work, how it's evolving. And, and the, this object here is kind of dematerialized, like in the book, famous book of Lucy Lippert from 73, the dematerialization of the art objects. But the interesting that this, the project started from nearly the op uh, apparently the opposite, which is this real one-man bunker, uh, and um, which is very heavy. Also, it started. It's a paradox, as we have talked today, that it's a, a German bunker from the Nazi time, and you, an artist who came from Israel, have kind of um, how to say conserved or saved. This one-man bunker. Yeah, I, uh, it's a very, it's a very funny story how how this evolved because I wasn't even aware that we have one-man bunker in Germany. Like afterwards, like we were having fun of it. Like we found this one-man bunker from Germany with different parts and stuff. Very interesting. But the notion that I have about uh, safety and how I can be in a space disconnected and trying to be connected, kind basically from a different project that I did uh, with 
Albania. And in Albania, and, and I will show it because it's nice to see. So at the, at the time of the 80s, the dictator in Albania was really, a, let's say, freaked out from the situation with the Cold War between the, the States and, and Russia. And he decided that he wants that everybody in his country will be safe. And he started to build bunker all over the countries, hundreds of thousands of bunker for one person, for a family, and for a big crowd. And the thing that you're seeing now is the screen is this one band bunker that looked like a small mushroom. And I was really fascinated about this object. And I thought it would be amazing to do a road trip to Albania to find one of these objects that I will feel very connected to it, put it on a boat, and put it in the center of old town Düsseldorf to see how people will react to this. And with an, with an old, with, let's say, further on, we had the chance to talk with an old person that was in Düsseldorf, in Germany, and he said, he told the story that when he was a child, he remembered that in the war, there was one man bunker. And I was really fascinated because I never heard about something like this. He said it was never really function, and it was kind of forgotten. And he tell me vividly where is this object is because he didn't have a street or something. And I went to Google Map, and I tried to find this kind of uh, object. So I went to the place that he kind of said or was saying, and I found this kind of very strange conus. And I said it can't be. So I took my car because this object, we are in Düsseldorf, and next to us there's the, the city noise. The next to it, it's the city of Karst. And on the border, the road border, between the city of Karst and Düsseldorf, this object was. And, and when I come, I found it like this. And I didn't know if I, I was mesmerized. I tried to understand who's the owner. I found the city. I asked, nobody knew. And I'm coming after one week, and I wasn't even know what was it. And then I found this bunker in this uh, in this brochure, uh, in this thing. And what's interesting, this bunker was was produced in the time of the war in Noise. It's a company that it's from here, and my studio is in Noise. Like this company is not existing anymore, but it was very. It was very interesting because it, it suddenly it's, it's make it very personal because it's next to me. And we found this and then I coming after one week, this object is outside, exciting, talking to the city. We found the owner and he said, I hate this work. I had this bunker for 50 years and it's front of my eyes every day. I'm going to destroy it next week. If you want to have it, take it. It's yours. <laughs> So it's kind of hard to take three and a half ton. So <laughs> we brought this big crane, the taking caravans, and uh, we put it on the caravan and I took it to the studio and we did a beautiful film that I'm chasing in the Autobahn. It was very surrealistic. And uh, yeah, so it started with a very physical, physical object. And the thing about security, I said, it's very interesting uh, and important for everyone. And when I was searching this material for today, I found this thing. This is something that I brought from Israel. It's the mask against God that we got when we had the goal for with the Saddam Hussein. It was an idea about maybe gas attacks. And suddenly I found it inside of this, this bunker book so it was kind of a, a strange situation so this you had this bunker since years before you started to really think what you could do with it no i i have this bunker already from 2014 13 next to my studio at that time i was just israeli and now i'm german israeli so it's again a different context but I had this idea that I want to take this massive object and for me it's representing a kind of a body and I wanted to, to squeeze it, to squeeze it by force. Like, uh, like if I'm looking at the marble of uh, Bernini, I feel the hand is going to uh, the flesh. Or if, uh, if I'm looking at some, uh, in, in, uh, in Monster we have the Three Kings, uh, 
gel part on, on top. So to have the feeling that from one side I'm being squeezed by force, but maybe from the other side I'm being uh, grabbed for protection. So it's a kind of a dissonance between the things. And we really tried to grave this line in the bunker, but this equipment wasn't existing. It took me a lot of years to find a special company with a special equipment that can really go and make what I want in the material. Mm -hmm. And you made a video relatively early, no? A video of yourself, where you're inside of this one-man bunker and kind of having associations in a way. Yes. No? So, so which is the model then for the installation in a way? Yes. So when, when I started uh, the bunker project, the digital parts website that you're seeing wasn't uh, in, in the idea and it was evolving uh, with the time of the corona and and there was the moment about uh, reflection and how do i feel and we're going to see it for a second Feeling great. Reflection. I'm all alone. Why am I here? Feeling connected. Feeling pressure. Feeling safe. Feeling safe. Feeling, Feeling anxiety. Echo. I am, I am so, so lucky. lucky. I'm with my thoughts. Why, 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 why am I here? Feel Talk to me. Share your thoughts with others. Write in the comments. What do you feel? This is Amit Gopher. So when has this been? Uh, this, when we started it, I think it was uh, around uh, now, this started around May, July, this idea of Notion. Um, uh, July in... 2021. 2021. Yeah. Last, last, or, so is, is this, for instance, this idea, this experience we all had through the lockdown, has this something to do with it? This work is basically is generating new ideas and thoughts by time. And of course, it was on the time of the lockdown, and I was reflecting about the situation, because when you're inside of the bunker, and I'm not such a high person, but my head was always already went my hair because it's going up, going up. Like Gregory, he has to have a little <laughs> bit of space. But there's a special um, feeling inside because, because first of all, it's so small and so thick that it's echoing so strong. You're standing in the center and it's echoing around you. And then you're going a little bit to here because we have these lines that you can look and look outside what's happening and then the sound is, is vanishing. So you reflected with the reality and maybe with your other thoughts. And it was, was interesting at that time because when I was reproducing the work, of course I was doing it with different companies. We have a person that came and lifted and then we have people that graved it. And there was a, a team that came and did all of, uh, all of the metal part with me there. And we have regulation with Corona. And then you have like this curfew that at 9 p.m. everybody has to be at home and I was rushing because I had five minutes to come home uh, so it, there was a lot of feeling and, and emotion going in this process mm -hmm. yeah. and this you feel it very strongly in, but it's also because we, we were talking about minimal art and so as a long-term tradition if you see this of course one thinks also on the, the question of um, reducing space for visitors, for instance, in an exhibition, is something which was very strong in a lot of pieces in minimal art. And of course, the one tradition could be here for this reducing of space, but also this kind of talking. Uh, it could be Bruce Norman, no? I love Bruce Norman. Yeah. Uh, I think for me, it's really interesting to see how, what's the, basically the difference when I'm inside of, of a small space as an inside, as a center, and then maybe people can look around me, mm -hmm. or being an, as an, an observer from the outside. Because then I have a situation that I can decide do I want to be participating in this work, 
participating me in an object or me and an object and other people looking at me inside of this object. So we're starting to have this kind of different uh, rules or engagement in space. Mm. And but from these kind of experiences uh, came out this uh, internet project in a way to to create from this completely disconnected space a kind of new connection to everywhere in a way. Yes. So the thing that happened, uh, we decided to invent this uh, virtual space. And by virtual space, I mean that uh, if I'm going inside of the website that is evolving every day, um, we have this project and, and basically website, other website that we evolve. And this is the sound and voices of people from all over the world. So we have a virtual bunker. And every time we have a lot of hundreds of recording from, from here and from other places, from the bunker and from the internet. And every time the system is uh, choosing 30 uh, voices randomly, so every time it's changing. And it's exactly the same thing. I can be an observer from the outside in this virtual space. I can go around. I can see it as an eye or something else. I'm very free. But at the same time, I can be the center of the event. I can see that all of the voices are around me. And I'm reflecting this echo maybe in my head. Uh, I can go and hear. Hi, my name is Claudia. I'm in front of the Kunsthaus LRW in the Sculpture Garden, and I'm feeling fine. Hello. So it's very different, yeah, because. Everything uh, that is without a background is something that was from the bunker. And we have different uh, parameters here. I can go to the archive and see where was the recording was recorded. If it was in the bunker, if it was in the internet, and which time it was. I can uh, go and record myself. We are now doing a talk in the Kunsthalle Düsseldorf with Robert Fleck, Gregor Janssen, Amit Goffer, and all of you. This will be broadcast afterwards through all over the world. We are now doing a talk in the Kunsthalle Düsseldorf with Robert Fleck, Gregor Janssen, Amit Goffer, and all of you. This will be broadcast afterwards through all over the world. Okay, and then I can choose if I'm uploading this to the world or not. And if I'm uploading it, of course, I can delete it afterwards or send a message, but... So it will go to the system, yeah? Uh, of course, there's a safety uh, system inside. It's not going directly to the system because I don't want to have uh, some fascist or Nazis or something uh, inside. But it's, it's very open. And because we're talking about atmosphere and how do I feel when I'm inside or outside, you have a possibility to change the mood of the bunker. You can change the color. So this is one thing. And something that evolved from this project, it's about the tree trying to connect people from all over the world. And we invented another part of this project. It's calling a map. And this is the map of the world. And this is updating live. And what we're seeing here basically is from all of the country of the world, how many interaction was with this bunker physically and not physically. I can go, let's say, to Germany. I see that there were like 277, if it was virtual or not virtual or uh, other country, every country that I'm going is just telling me, okay? And we're really trying to spread this. And on the bottom we have, oh, 
basically what's happening with this project. So this project is going to grow. As Gregor said, we already have some intervention for the future. We started to do a collaboration with the Cambodia Guta Center in Phnom Penh. Uh, we already did a talk with them that was released yesterday. Very interesting about the perception of how they see the last two years, what changed, and what their thoughts for the future. And it consists in June, July, another site-specific object in their galleries there. And some other intervention in, uh, in Dublin and US and Argentina and some other places. So. And it's, so this um, potentially worldwide space, in a way, uh, is coming out of the most uh, of the smallest space you can imagine, and this is very interesting. The, of course, the smallest space you can imagine it's really a bunker, which is a, a specific form of architecture, and it's very interesting to see that you also that you brought your book, uh, your copy of the book Paul Virilio Bunker Archaeology. Uh, Paul Virillo was a French philosopher, more, uh, he was in fact a painter at the origin and an architect and he made this book in the late 1970s when he really analyzed the bunkers on the Atlantic wall. Um, and it's very, I'm living there in Brittany and it's very interesting to see of course there's all 500 meters there's a bunker and if you go in it's also completely small and you're completely disconnected with everything. Yeah, and but he really showed that it's an architecture form in itself, which is very important for many things going on in architecture afterwards in in second half of the 20th century. So uh, of course, you how you work, you transformed in fact this one mine bunker in a in a sculpture, and but it's of, yeah fantastic architecture. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's also very interesting when you see the, just the local history that these bunkers made the uh, French craftsmen rich. Very yeah. rich. Because the, the, the Germans paid them, of course, to construct them. Also, the inside there were kind of apartments. Yeah. And uh, the people there really got rich by constructing these bunkers for the Germans. Very funny. So we have a lot of paradox. But uh, how is this dialogue between this architecture and the architecture of your World Wide Web uh, I think system? First of all, for me, the Kunsthaus, if we are talking about this bunker, you know, the, the sides of the, of the Kunsthaus, uh, it's a kind of like circleized, and it's remind me, it's very massive from the outside. Mm. And it's it was like called Bunker, no? It was called, no, but, uh, but there was a pol polemic in the 1960s after the construction of this building, and the people said that we, we should, this, this is a bunker, this has to disappear. Yeah. But it means a safe space. <laughs> it is. <laughs> For art. Um, you know, I will give uh, two examples. Uh, first, if we were talking about uh, this, this bunker, um, So, I was invited to the Swedish Biennale in 2013, and I was really fascinating about this bunker architect, and I decided to take this, this object, this uh, scheme, this sketch from this big uh, object, and decide to make this kind of a safe place for a person and for a small child. So you have a bunker for a small child and a bunker for a person, and they can go inside from the bottom, so the physical is visible from the outside, but from the inside, everything is dark and soundproof. And there's a sound installation. So you're with your thoughts, disconnected from the body, but at the same time, you're connected to the reality. And so this was a very interesting event. So this, this was in 2017, no? This was 2013. Ah, okay. And yeah, you were saying before that, of course, if you live in Israel, the bunkers are all over in every house nearly, and so is this. Um, I don't know. I just think on the uh, these cellular sculptures of um, Absalom. I, yes. Yeah. This. Uh, uh, yes. Just a second. 
what I wanted to say, and I will take the sound. Uh, you know, I really didn't, when I'm saying that I'm coming from Israel, this is not supposed to be the main point, like security and you're coming and this is what it is, because it's about a bigger idea. It's about a physical and a mental space that you feel something with it. Mm -hmm. And I want to show you some parts because uh, from, from a film that inside of the blog, uh, in the blog you can see all of the process of how it was developed and with talks. And it's interesting to see how people are reacting physically to this object. Mm -hmm. So we have people from the outside. So again, I'm, I'm a, a vast observer that looking from far away. This object, this bunker, is lifted from the ground and it's look like, uh, and I will show afterwards, it's look like it's floating in the air. So it's a kind of a dissonance, kind of a poetic moment of how I'm taking this very massive real thing and dissolving it in thin air. And, and then it's by itself or you're inside of it and you feel something totally different. So people really like giving different ideas and when you see someone inside of, of, of a thing and you feel that someone is observing and looking at you because you see it you feel intimidated. You don't know what he's feeling. Does he wants to do something good for me? Does he has bad ideas for me? Uh, what does they think uh, inside? Or are they aware to the people that are around? And there is this moment that the age is very uh, strong. You have like small kids that making photos and playing with it. And at the same time, and there was a, a very unique moment when when an, an old guy came to this object and you could see physically that he remember this object from his childhood, he's connected to it, he's touching it like it's a friend or, or it's a boy. He, he had like a nice discussion with it and it was a very, a very unique, unique feeling situation. And, and after that, we have a moment that the next generation is coming and playing with this object, it's totally changed. No, and, and then we had the thing. May 16, 2021. 1, 3, 6 p.m. <laughs> So basically, someone German say, said, uh, and I will say it in English, uh, goodbye, friend, uh, hello, friend, hello, friend, hello, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Uh, so we have like this kind of moments inside. Mm -hmm. And uh, was the title, uh, was the title Sleeping for Tomorrow also used there? No, it was the, the Sleeping for Tomorrow is used here, no? Sleeping for tomorrow, it's the concept of this big idea of uh, when I'm sleeping, I will get up afterwards. Maybe I'm inside of a dream. Maybe I'm in a bad situation and I want to go forward. Or maybe I'm in a dissonance with myself. And sleeping for tomorrow, it's maybe we all want to go to sleep because we're all tired from this situation. Or sleeping for a better future. And all of this object, like we had the bunker, it was sleeping for tomorrow, and the object here is sleeping for tomorrow one. And then it will grow and grow and grow. So it's a vast net of sleeping for tomorrow's ideas. And this is a title which has nothing to do with the physical a behavior you have to make here. You have not to sleep in the So Is it just, uh, it, in fact, it's a poetical second part in a way, nearly. Uh, it, I, it opens it up to another space. I think in, in, all, in all of my work, uh, 
they are kind of poetic uh, names. They are maybe invented and poetic. They may be taken from uh, movies or, or books or poets that are talking about a big idea of life, if we're trying to connect or if I'm against something. Uh, and it's opening another dimension, as you said. It's opening something and it's changing by time. And it's, um, in a way, um, um, of course, sleeping for tomorrow is something, it's a very, how to say, um, um, anregung in a way, to, just to, for the people really to reconsider their whole life and their whole space, because this could be something you write on your bedroom, uh, like the surrealist poet who wrote, uh, who took, um, when he was going to sleep, he uh, did put a sign on the bedroom door um, at L'artiste uh, Travail, the artist is working. Yeah? <laughs> And uh, so it's a little, it has this kind of dimension. But I think it's, the title is very beautiful and this opens it up to, to a various, to a thing which is more than just a functional um, a sculpture. I think uh, in a lot of the works, I'm talking about connection and I'm talking about dimension. Because uh, maybe we are standing here and there's other dimensions vibrating in screen theory and other things and someone maybe is standing at the same place thinking something totally different and maybe somehow it's connecting to me. So it's a kind of an attempt to, as you said, like enlarge this thing. And to have the word sleeping in a museum is very special. Sometimes people are sleeping in a museum, it can, but to, it, you're not allowed to stay to sleep until tomorrow here. I did, it once, I did it once in the Wiener Secession, <laughs> just to have it done once, <laughs> because it's very nice if you have the ghosts of Gustav Klimt and everybody in the space when you're sleeping there. We did it several, uh, we did it several times. Rita McBride, for example, she, uh, when she did the arena here, yeah, it was a 24 hours overnight event, so people really came with sleeping bags and so on. Mm. And there was the other one with the Ralf Brück music intervention, the 24 hours piece, um, like Douglas Gordon, was it done like with the concert, 24 hours extended. But of course it's not, it's not normal and not usual. But I was thinking about now because we had the Stefan Marx piece here based on the novel uh, by, what, what's her name again? Uh, uh, she wrote this wonderful book where, where he puts the sentence out, I woke up upon a sofa a few days later but Stefan mentioned it, or well, named it in a few weeks later. And then we had the Eduardo Tibasualdo work here with the crone, what is now translated into Corona. Uh, so there are some, there was a fence, the open, uh, the, the uh, yellow white uh, metal fence here hanging. So the sleeping for tomorrow, I think is, is, is really a good metaphor or, or the surrealist uh, open space to someone else when, when you don't need to travel physically and communicate physically. But uh, yeah, I think we should offer this more often, <laughs> sleeping here in the museum. Why not? Yeah, it could be, could be great. <laughs> but do you have next stops, next stations for your project? Um. So first of all, this project now is evolving in two directions. Uh, one, it's about making this blog bigger. And by bigger, it's doing a discussions or doing a virtual discussion with people uh, from all over the world that they are connecting and sharing and explaining what was their experience in their country, in their position in the last two years at the time of the corona they sharing something personal that happened for them, they changed something in the, the mind, uh, how was the people in the street and in the country reacting, and what's happening now from this, and what's hopefully their thoughts to a better future, what can we do? And yesterday we were releasing the, f the second talk, as we said, with Guta Center, uh, Cambodia, and it was a beautiful talk, very, very different, there was a moment that uh, in Cambodia, the, the person that brought the virus, there are the foreigners, us, and the Chinese, that, but us. So there was a moment that in the talk that he's saying, uh, 
all of the foreigners were not allowed to go to the supermarket and the cinema and the other places, but the, fo- the, no- the Cambodian people were afraid. So it's a kind of an opposite situation. And, uh, and he's telling what's, what's changed or what he, he thinks will change in the country, and it was very beautiful. And we are planning in June, July, uh, in this Guta Center Gallery uh, in Phnom Penh. It's called the Meta House. Uh, we are planning to do another site specific. It's going to be an intervention and a collaboration with uh, probably a, a local architect because when uh, the king was there, still, but before that, uh, after the, before the Khmer Rouge uh, came, there was a big student, um, Molvara, and he was in Paris and he was in Europe and he was very influenced from La Corbusier and from the Bauhaus and he was implementing the Bauhaus and the ideas and themas of Bauhaus with traditional Cambodia uh, architect at that time and he was the most, he was doing the biggest national project there and when I came it's funny because in the Bauhaus everything was lifted on, on, uh, on tubes on top so the air can go inside and lifting and floating the, the building and you coming there and you see the same object it's floating and I'm asking wow you know Bauhaus it's amazing here and they say yeah but the other thing it came much earlier because in old time this is a village and we have like lions and some other things that want to come in and eat you at night so we had to defend ourselves so we put ourselves up and it's not flat they have a kind of small pagodas with a few pagodas all over the buildings imitating the big pagodas of a uh, Cambodian style. So it's a kind of a mix and we were trying to do something there. Again, with the same uh, recording box. But what's interesting there, it's about the writing. Because by law, the king, they have two languages. They have the, the Khmer and they're using the English. But if you're writing something, you have to write the both of them. But the Khmer has to be bigger. So this has to be planned on, on the board because when we did this talk, he said, if you're not talking in the language of the people, the Khmer, you're dismissing a large piece of community that want to come and connect with you. And in the Meta House, they did a lot of events. And it, 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 with the talk, it was amazing to hear how the people from the street came, not just the artists and the art scene and how they are trying to uh, combine. And this is hopefully what we're going to do to connect Cambodian, maybe I'm not going to understand all of it, uh, to the world. And from this, maybe we're going to have some talks with the States and going to have a talk with uh, Dublin and Argentina and probably Israel. And I hope it will really grow all over the world in the next year, two years. From the, from the smallest space of the world. From the smallest to the biggest. So this work is working. You can go inside. You inside this object. You can press, and it will tell you. You can record yourself up to two minutes, reflecting about the situation that you want to share with people. A moment from here, or from the last two years, you can hear people that was recording things in in the console. So this button, everything that was recorded here, and we have more than 60 recordings. Uh, it's just for now, and after this project will be uh, go down, all of this uh, recording will go to the internet. Because there is a very important, I think, for everyone, that when you're going to a place and really feel someone else standing in the same place that you are standing and doing something. So I would like to thank you so much, Robert and Amit. There was... Uh... Yeah, very good to learn more, to hear more about uh, swords and actually what, what Robert mentioned uh, in all the dimensions of the history of art. It's very interesting uh, and yeah, thanks once more for asking us uh, to having you. So we are really glad and happy um, that uh, the start is, is done and, and ha- it started already last year as, as we heard, but uh, I also try to support it in the future. Thank you very much. And before we are uh, finishing, I just want to share a small uh, thing. So inside of the bunker itself, there was a small shield. And this shield, uh, this is the original shield 
and it say it was made in noise and this is their original uh, writing this one Ben bunker from this company and in my bunker we don't have someone took it so I basically I made a new version for this with the sleeping photo more the same uh, special topography from the Second World War it was just used at that time uh, for one man person sleeping for tomorrow and yeah thank you thank you very much for thank you Robert Flex thank you Amir Goffa thanks for coming thank you thank you very much <laughs>